Assalamu alaikum alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A few days ago, somebody asked me a question. The question was, what is it that makes people righteous? What makes a person good? What's the definition of good according to Islam? And I thought of a verse of the Quran. Let me read it to you. It's the verse found in Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the second chapter of the Quran, as you all know. And this verse really gets to the bottom of it all. Where it says, verse number 147, if I'm correct. No, 177, to be more precise. The verse reads like this. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا جُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَ وَالْمَسَاكِنَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالْمُؤْفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا أَعْهَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُتَّقُونَ Very profound verse, at least for me. I don't know about you. Let me explain this verse to you. What Allah is saying here, He's saying true piety does not consist of you turning your faces to the east or the west. In other words, piety isn't confined to a geographical location. You don't become pious because you come from the Middle East. You don't become pious because you come from Far East. You don't become pious because you come from North Africa or other parts of the globe. You don't become pious because of a particular country or ethnicity or nationality or the color or the language that you speak. That's not piety. That's not righteousness. Righteousness is found globally. Every human being has the potential to be righteous. Every human being has the potential to gain righteousness. In other words, become good. We're all born with the qualities of being good or unfortunately going down the path of becoming bad. Whether we become good or bad, is determined by what we invest in. If we invest in our goodness, then of course goodness will proliferate. If we invest in our badness, then the badness will proliferate. So the first part of this verse universally and emphatically declares that goodness is found everywhere. It's not confined to a geographic location, nationality, nationality ethnicity, color or language, or any chosen people. Everyone has the potential to be good. So that's number one. Then God defines how he sees goodness. First part is about the belief system. Those who are truly pious or truly righteous are the ones who have believed in Allah, who believe in the last day, the angels, the revelation, the prophets. So the concept of belief, the foundation, the framework, how you think and your attitude, what influences your attitude. As a Muslim, my belief system influences my attitude, that Allah is my creator. I believe in the day of judgment, that there will be accountability for me in the hereafter. I believe in the revelation books that Allah sent down to prophets. He sent those books using his angels. Prophets delivered those messages to you and me. I believe in those ways of receiving revelation. I believe in Allah as one and the only. That framework makes me righteous. It's like an internal radar. It's a conscious and subconscious radar. My belief system makes me who I am. So that's the first quality of a person who is righteous, pious or good. You can't be righteous, you can't be pious or you can't be good unless you have a very clear belief system. The second one is also very important. It then talks about how righteousness is defined by how much time we spend in serving others. How much money we spend. How much effort we give. How much thinking we put into serving human beings through charity. So Allah says, those righteous people are the ones who spend from their own money. However much they may need the money, it doesn't matter. They still spend it on their family their relatives, on the orphans and the needy, the travelers, the beggars, and freeing human beings from bondage and slavery. Not only do you have a belief system, not only do you believe in one Allah, and the Day of Judgment and all the elements of belief as Allah describes, but you manifest that belief 
by serving human beings, by being at service of other humans. Gandhi, a very profound personality from history, especially from Indian parts of the world, from India, he said, true happiness is found in serving human beings. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, the best of people are those who are beneficial to others. So your belief in Allah must be manifested by your qualities of service that you provide to other people. In charity, in looking after them, in being kind. You've got a neighbor who needs your help and support, go and attend them. You've got a neighbor who's elderly, needs shopping, do the shopping for them. You've got a neighbor who needs their house cleaning, fence mending, garden sorting, for front garden sorting, car washing. You, need, you have a neighbor who needs to be taken to hospital. Look after your neighbors. Look after your relatives, especially your blood relatives. They have a right over you. Look after your parents, your families, your brothers, your sisters. Give charity often. Use your money to free people from slavery and bondage. In the modern world, we don't have slavery and bondage, I know. Not like it used to be before. But we do have modern day slavery where people are entrapped in their positions of employment, almost like bondage. Domestic workers in many parts of the world are taken in like slaves or people's lands are occupied and people are treated as though they're second class humans. Spending your money in charity to free people from such calamities, such awful infliction that has been put over them by humans as well as eradicating poverty and serving humanity. That's the second quality of a person who is truly righteous, truly pious and truly good. The third quality, according to this verse, is that those not only are believers in Allah, not only do they serve their fellow human beings, but they also serve themselves. How do they serve themselves? By feeding their spiritual needs. They pray, they give zakat. They do the spiritual essentials to keep afloat, keep above the abyss of disbelief. They say above the possibilities of drowning in other influences by servicing their soul. Prayer is a service to your soul. Prayer is the connection with God. Prayer is your communication with God. So God says true righteousness and true goodness, true virtue, true piety is manifested also by those people who are regular in their prayer, who pay their zakat, who will be fasting, who perform their hajj in servicing your belief system, in servicing your belief in God. That's the third quality of a person who is truly righteous. And the fourth and the final quality in this verse we find, God then says, and those whose character is impeccable. What does he mean by character impeccable? In this particular verse, Allah gives examples of people who keep their promises. They just don't make promise, they also keep them. Not just say, I will do this and they break them. Those who keep their promises, they're good people. You say, I'll, be, I'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock, be there at 5 o'clock. You say you'll start your event at 7 o'clock, start at 7 o'clock. You say your wedding will start at 3 o'clock, start at 3 o'clock. Don't lie about it and don't give one time and then start at a different time. Time is an essential gift of God and it forms part of your promise. If you promise to pay somebody their debt, pay them on time. If you have promised to do a favor to somebody, do them. If you're going to make a promise, keep them. Breaking promise actually demonstrates a weak side of you, a bad quality and a bad character that you have. And in the eyes of God, truly good people, Truly virtuous people, truly pious people are those who don't, break, who don't break their promises. So don't break your promises. And then God says, and they're patient when misfortune befalls them. So their inner core, they have developed their strength and their character to a degree where they're happy to delay what they want for later. They don't need it straight away. They're not dying to have instant gratification. Patience is your abilities to have it later, to be prepared to have it delayed. I call it delayed gratification. And also, you put in your effort to do the best 
within your, within your capacity to achieve what you want to achieve, if the gratification comes later, you are happy. And whatever is the outcome, ultimately, you are content with it because you believe you've done your best and the outcome has been determined by Allah. It's called being patient. Especially when you are afflicted with misfortune. Difficulties come, you always turn to Allah and say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. From Allah we come and to Him we belong and to Him we shall return. This is a word of consolation. So patience is an indication of your good character. Keeping your promise is an indication of your good character. And then Allah says, these are the people who have proven themselves to be true. And these are the people who are truly God conscious. So if you're looking for piety, if you're looking for a definition of righteousness, don't mistake it by thinking I'm going to look for it in different countries. It doesn't exist. It exists wherever you are, whether you live in the East or the West. You could be living in Europe, America, Australia. You could be living in the Middle East. You could be living in Asia, Far East. You could be living in Africa, North, South, Center. You could be living anywhere in the world. You could be as good as the best of pious people. Because you have believe in Allah, believe in God and the elements of belief that He has prescribed for you. Because you serve humanity through charity and good work. Because you've got a serving a daily renewal of your faith through prayer and your charitable deeds. Because you've got impeccable character, number four, right? Impeccable character. And only then do you prove yourself to be true. And only then do you attain God consciousness. This is how I look at God consciousness. How do you look at it? Do you look at God consciousness with people who are wearing a particular attire, the way they look? False and fake. Don't even look at it. True piety, true God consciousness lies in the way this verse has defined it. May we all find true piety, true righteousness and true God consciousness within ourselves. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.